Season one, episode five. Andor. Ooh, I this scene right at the beginning, he's like looking off into the into like the, met the metropolis, and all you see is these gray buildings and damaged, gross, intoxicated, feel bad, bad words sky. <laughs> and then he's like, "I see the light. I see Jesus." Now he's gonna go help the Empire. Still, probably. Are the rebels really on the good side? I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's one of the things in Star Wars, like the Empire does have good points because True. when I played some of the games, the Republic falls into corruption and it's the Empire that comes with their stern authority to stamp down the corruption. So they're good for like a period of time. Hmm. Which, by the way, is that is that light? Is that the sun? This light right here. Is that the sun? I think that's a metaphor for the sun for the sun so it's just a really bright floodlight somewhere in the city skyline. i guess you could think of stars as giant floodlights like yeah yeah they don't focus their light anywhere it just floods it everywhere in full four pi so it is the sun of the coruscant system sure sure okay <laughs> would be funny if it was actually like a police helicopter and like shining a light at him he's like okay I'm reinvigorated. <laughs> but it's really just a police chase. Police chase, yeah. Do they have police in Star Wars? I've really seen Jedi. police. I mean, they're like a galactic wide Para special yeah, yep. thing. Yep. But they're not like police, like I got, you know, I think they're cat stuck in a tree. Oh yeah. yeah Calling the guess. Jedi. Does Coruscant have trees? I mean, it's probably got a couple on like rooftops. Oh, and the rich, rich people like rich people get parks. That's right. And then this guy, oops, this guy right here, our mm -hmm. favorite corporate guy. He ain't rich. Mm -hmm. He's he's down in the bowels with his abusive mother. She's so mean. Yeah. Why you're so mean? So it's a little a little too real. With the mother son relationship it's like yeah. oh man <laughs> i felt oh, man. it it's like oh god yeah. oh gosh just hug him you're so mean to him i know it's brutal <laughs> what is it what is his name we got to learn this yeah let's look up his name what is his name maybe he doesn't come out i gotta look up his name i do look up the people's names and then i forget them and it's star wars it's hard to, they're not like mike and john it's their star wars names Cyril? Oh gosh. Cyril. Cyril. Okay. Cyril. Like, well, like he's what he's eating is Cyril. And how his life has gone. Just Cyril failure. Mm hmm And he'll be so upset he'll be a Cyril killer. And he will find his life has become Cyril. That's a that's a good concluding joke. <laughs> Serially. I think mean, it's cereal. Oh, hey, we're, next one's cereal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what yeah. I was saying. Oh, I thought you were doing word plays off of this guy's name. No, I was doing word plays off the fact that he's going to eat cereal. I don't know how much of it he eats though. He looks pretty unhappy. I know he. Kinda... But what cereal is this? Is this this looks like a mint chocolate chip? Yeah, maybe it's mint chocolate chip. I want this. It's not chocolate Applejack balls for sure. It's chocolate Applejacks. Uh, I think that was uh, that was a flavor for a while, right? Oh, it was? I Jeez. think so. Chocolate Applejacks. I'm yeah. also curious, what, what Star Wars animal does this come out of? Yeah. Well, who, who's, who's Titty Juice Blue is like this? It's not the Luke Skywalker milk because that's green. Skywalker so it's green. just... Is it just random off-color milk? And there's just huge numbers of random off-color milk in the Star Wars universe and we're never tracked down what animal it came from. Yeah, I mean, 
of all the animals and aliens, I guess, we've seen in the Star Wars franchise, we do not have a library of what their milk fluids colors are like. That's right. On Earth, what do we have? Goat's milk, cow milk. Soy milk. Almond milk. Soy milk. Almond milk. There's different plants as well. So on, on, on a planet, say Earth, we have five different milks. If there's a million planets in the galaxy. Camel. With five each, we're talking five million different types of milk. Elephant. We'll never be able, never be able to track this down. Giraffe. Do we? I don't know if anybody drinks giraffe's milk. I know camel for for sure. Yak? Yak milk? Okay. There's like something in the Siberian tundra that is like the milk is like super thick, like a whole meal, something like that. So there's, yeah, basically we're never going to be able to track this down in Star Wars, I think. But but it's fun to guess. So this picture is, what is his name? Cyril? Cyril. In his apartment with his abusive mother, well, emotionally well, abusive mom, mother. He is His just, mom's apartment. He cannot handle her. He is just crumbling before our eyes. He was... You know, Nor should confident. he. That's too mean. What's that? Nor should he be handle it. She's too mean to him. Yeah, she's pretty mean. Just to him. constantly disparaging him. Build him up. Yeah, it's your baby. Brutal. You even see in his body language here. You know, he's just he's just wrecked Seriously. as a person. Yeah. Also, the Star Wars look. Everything in this apartment is so permanent. Like, mm. if you don't want that table there, well, too too bad. Too bad. It's there. If you don't want this, uh, this like appliance, whatever this thing is over here, well, it's built into the outer wall. So too bad. <laughs> it's, it's not even built into the inner wall. It's the outer wall. You want it? You don't want it? You tear a hole in your in your building. <laughs> yeah. Here's some I mean, weather from the outside. <laughs> yeah. I mean, kudos to the mother for keeping the place uh, very, very, very clean. But yeah, kudos yeah. to that little cleaner bot in the corner. That's right. Actually, that's that's little... that's, that's who's doing the business. Mm-hmm. 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 Actually, that's not a good circle right there. Cleaner butt. Cool. He's guns. Cool. So you were saying um, that these right here looks like currency. Is that right? That's actually yeah, it's like coins. Physical money. Yeah. So this heist this, that's coming up that they're setting up might be actual mm-hmm. coins. Mm-hmm. And this is his pistol thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, what is this right here? What is that? It looks like two things. One is some type of like magnifying glass or tubey thing, maybe a flashlight. And the one on the left is like some type of tool, maybe. Mm, Yeah, maybe for gun maintenance, it's a tool. Yeah. Maybe it's one of these like universal things. I don't know. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. Yeah. And then I guess this this is the pistol that he killed Uh, those two workers those two brothel patrons with and then this is the scope that was on top yeah 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 Yeah. i like it yeah very cool and is this this is corporate issue this one that's corporate issue yeah 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 and then this is cool rebel rebel issue customized yeah i guess yeah i don't know where it came from (laughs) yeah very cool Hmm. surprise there's hard currency like coins in star wars you know yeah i guess Huh. How do you how do you do a galactic economy? Yeah, and I guess if banking is all over the place on the galactic scale, you need to transfer wealth from one place to another. I guess precious metals is the way to go. I don't know. Oh man. So what makes it precious? Is it societally they view it as precious or is it precious as in like it's utility or is it precious as in like it's abundance? Right. I guess what what makes money money? It's got to be fungible. It's got to be untarnishable. It's got to be rare, but not too rare. There's some definition of money. And there could be other, there could be many types of money in the, in the galaxy. So, you know, one government over here makes a ton of money. Another bank over here makes different kinds of money. And there's exchange rates between them, black markets. It could be quite complicated. Quite complicated. Hmm. This could be. You can get some like Star Wars slash econ study group nerds, figure it out. Hmm. Yeah. 
maybe when they make the the big next Star Wars MMO that can have competing currencies like Eve Online style. Ooh, that'd be cool. Like depending on your faction's strength, your currency also is bigger. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. But I think this this currency right here, what is is Imperial? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you can, they're a classic hexagon, mm -hmm. and also a pentagon. Okay, the, yeah. the number of sides denotes the value. <laughs> like, it could be like the circle is an infinite resource. <laughs> mm -hmm. Only infinite the and only emperor has a circular coin. Yeah, that's why he calls it medallion. Uh. Yeah, what is this thing? What yeah, is what this is tattoo? this thing? It looks like a maybe like maybe an octopus, but with some limbs missing. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a pentapus. Pentapus, pentapode, pentapode. Yeah, five feet. So, so this guy, who's kind of the the weird guy, noticed that Andor noticed the tattoos, and he made it's it, like, it you seem like at my tattoos like that. <laughs> <laughs> They made it seem like it was some kind of child labor work camp marking yeah. that other people didn't recognize. So Andor and this guy somehow were involved in child labor. That's that's how I interpreted I, I, it. I thought the one at his the one on the chest was like an orphanage something. And oh. then I guess you tattoo kids at an orphanage. I think so. And then this one on his arm was like from a company, I guess. He's like laboring for them and they marked them so that they know who like who works for them, I guess. The to the left of this image is the one on his chest. It is, does look like a barcode. So I still am confused about Mon Mothma's relationship with her husband and why they're together. He seems to be this person who kind of just wants to party um, and isn't worried about all this like galactic nonsense. But she's yeah, really into this like, what's that? Just be rich. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. And I got the feeling that so Mon Mothma is helping, you know, the downtrodden in the galaxy through her Senate power. Um, and I think her husband would disapprove of that if he found out. But the daughter was giving her a hard time. But I got the feeling that if she, if the daughter found out that Mon Mothma was helping the downtrodden, the daughter would be on board. That's what I got from this hmm. scene. What I got from this was the daughter thinks the mom is just kind of bossy pushy. Mm -hmm. I didn't get any type of moral alignment from the daughter other than you know, normal teenage stuff. Like, you don't care about me. You're never around. Like, man. That being said, <laughs> the mom, like, really did prove the daughter's point. Like, she really did make it about herself, like, three times. Mm -hmm. But I got the feeling that the daughter is being pushy and teenagery because she doesn't know the kind of stress that her mother is under. She thinks it's just she's dismissing the daughter for work. But actually, no, she's actually out there saving millions of lives on the Great. daily. If the daughter knew, I think the daughter would be like, oh, shit. Yeah, I got to support my mother oh. a little bit more. Yeah. That's what—that's the feeling I got. I don't know. Whereas I hope husband so. is just like, I want to party. Yeah, I think he doesn't know what's going on with Mon Matha's secret life. And so he's mm -hmm. like, why are we rich and not having fun with it? Like, I think he's like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Is this their is this their apartment or whatever? I mean, what? I think this is their home. Yeah. Wow. Well, she's in the Senate, right? Maybe these are just yeah. like what Senate housing is like. Also, maybe she's just rich. Mm -hmm. Or he is rich, she is rich, they're rich, somehow, somehow lots of money. Somehow lots of money, and you can tell because there was so much food wasted in the scene. There's so much out. <laughs> it's like beautiful, delicious looking food. And they're like, whatever, just gonna eat whatever. one of these things. Like, no, mm -hmm. can't eat them all. Or don't make so many. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. It's the arrogance of bureaucrats on Trantor. Trantor. So this one, they let, they're like, this milk will let you live. Was it tree milk? Dray milk. D-R-A-Y. Dray milk. Dray is, that... is the name of their sheepies. Oh, the sheepies with the extra horns. Yeah, the, the horny guys. Yeah. I wonder if that's true. Could you be sustained on just milk? And live forever, not live forever, but like sustain yourself for years, maybe. Okay, so it depends maybe. on what type of nutrients is in the milk. What type I mean, of milk like is how many calories? Yeah, I guess milk is designed to make one mammal survive for long periods of time. So, yeah, babies and stuff. 
babies and stuff. Besides maybe some constipation issues, probably live. Although I guess indefinitely, I don't know. Because that would like like does the does the mother need some resources that are not provided to the baby, or is it just straight up like some fraction is for the mom, some fraction is for the baby? I don't know. That's a good question. Assuming though the yeah. goats or whatever the the horn the guys, yeah. the drays, they eat the grass, which then converts it to milk, which then they drink, and then the humans can't eat the grass, so they're little, you know, nutrition converters. So the drays eat the grass and the lions eat the drays and then when the die the lions die they become the grass. It's the or circle triangle of life. of life. Oh. You're going with N gone of life with N of three. Yeah. Actually it's the triangle. The number of, of species on Earth at any one time is finite. Therefore the Lion King was wrong. It's an N gone. Yep. Of life, not a circle of life. It approaches a circle. Never will approaches be. A Never will be. Lion King, false, fake news. Wrong. Teaching Wrong. kids bad stuff. Geometry. <laughs> Hakuna Morong. Hakuna Errata. That's that's better. Yeah, so this device that the idealistic young kid has uh -huh. he says it's not imperial and it's like free navigation oh, yeah uh-huh so i wonder how this thing works because he's saying it doesn't include any imperial parts it's like totally analog um and you can just like navigate from through the stars without needing the uh you know the corporate network or the imperial network to find your way is this a dig at google and apple Interesting. Yeah, like going back to sextant times. We used to just have these these objects, that, these devices that could just look up where the stars are and the curvature of the earth, and you mm -hmm. could figure out where you are. But now you need GPS guidance. Oof, you have corporate reaching into your, your phone all the time. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is so. the future. Maybe. Sextants for everyone. <laughs> Sextants for everyone. But it's true. Like there There is technology like this here on Earth today where <laughs> we've lost track of how to make the 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 old version we're all just beholden to the new stuff that's right you know cruise missiles as a backup use the stars really because in a that. jammed in a jammed environment that may be the only thing left stars stars you ain't moving if the enemy can control the stars you're effed anyway so Ooh, imagine that if the like, enemy was like well <laughs> here's here's the north pole and i moved it over a little bit and just a everyone's bit. tracking is just messed up it's just <laughs> <laughs> i don't need to jam it i'm going to physically move the star move a star <laughs> all the missiles land like 50 feet away like what <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. This guy. Mm -hmm. First day of Rebel Alliance membership is like arts and crafts. Because like these models, they're so good. They are. They're so good. And they use local materials. That's is right. Is it faithful? Is it faithful? Yeah. This is real good. Look at this. Yeah. So there's the, it's the got rail. This bar, there's the bar. This, yeah. this shapey here, slanties, approximate length and width. Approximate length and width. Shapies, the bar yeah. across the top. Yeah. These guys know exactly what's in there. Yeah. How did they get such good intel? I mean, ridiculous. I, wonder oh, if I see they, a flaw. Like, I see a flaw. Oh, 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 oh. Right? There's no opening for the guy to, for the thing to leave. Maybe that's it's why stuck. they ask they ask Cassian. They're like, how would you get this out? They're like, because they can't imagine it. Because their, their example has walls. <laughs> that's right. Our intel said there were walls, and we they didn't say anything about holes. I wonder but, if they got this designed so well because the lieutenant would come by and be like, no, 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 this part's missing. Uh, Add this thing. Yeah, That's got to be. And then yeah. to him, he was like, it's got to be super obvious that there's no wall on the front side there because otherwise this thing would, wouldn't get out. But get out, yeah. But these rebels, they're like, they didn't tell me it's not there, so, so maybe it mm -hmm. is. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a joke, but kind of not a joke. If you start like filling in blanks, Risky, for things yeah. that are supposed to be there you could start filling in things that actually aren't there mm -hmm. so the lieutenant needs to make sure that you know okay which side is the hole and is it two holes is it one hole this yeah the the back side there 
Uh -huh. We go back to that the real pick. Yeah, I got you. It looks like there's no hole back there. Am I reading right. That right? So there must be a hole over here. Also, yeah, on the on the, on the, the left side, the front side, the front side. Uh, yeah. Also, where where are these like blocky guys? Are these where are these cargo containers? That are things that were like what are these wooden structures over here? Like this thing look like structural pillars. Yeah. But what does that mean in terms of in the station? Maybe maybe I might look in. Like this is one structural section, and then back here is a second structural oh, section. There's like a there's like a little gappy slice right in there. I didn't quite line that up right here. Let me. Okay, no, I got you. See I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Like right there is the the outline. Right there. Nope, I will get it. Okay, no, I won't get it. I got you. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna get it. Right there. Oops. And got then, it. I got it. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Worth it. Got it. <laughs> 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 you're drawing on your phones. It was like you're like way in there. Cool. Cool. But for the most part, pretty good. Yeah, yeah you could definitely plan uh an assault. The robbery or whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, with this scale model, you really get good intel about, you know, entry points, exit points, mm -hmm. where to place people. Yeah. One, two, three segments and a little bit. Mm -hmm. One, two, three segments and a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it. I guess the floor space between the, the openings of the ship and the, the pillars in real okay. life is fairly wide. But in the model, it's... 12 meters much narrower meters. yeah they didn't quite get that right but Ooh. that could that could cause problems if they think it's that narrower than problems. it really is that could alter their plans yeah but still pretty good ah uh, yeah this is the dre. dre this is the the sheep with extra horns Mm -hmm. Yep. So they provide the blue milk. Yes, blue milk. I mean, I understand. Also, look at the they quality have... of this. Oh, go ahead. Go, go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Look at this fence. The fence is so good. Yeah. Like this is a. They really set up camp here for like high quality, expecting mm -hmm. multiple years. Like this is a very nicely done fence. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Oh. It really does. They really did a good job. Even this basket. This basket's very nice. Actually, the basket is a little too nice. It's a lot of leather straps. Too, what the heck? Too nice. Yeah. And I wonder if that leather is made out of other drays. Oh. That's dark as heck. That's super dark. He's this dray right here is being fed out of his mother's skin. Ugh. Oh, mommy. Ooh. Mommy. Okay, next picture. I can't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to say for this, like, okay, great fence, great little paddock for the the drays. Yeah. But like it's wide out in the open, you know. If they're worried about imperial surveillance, the imperials are like, "There's people right there." That. that right <laughs> What's there. that random rectangle <laughs> yeah. filled with drays? Drays don't do that on their own. People did that. Yeah. So in this middle of this meadow, with this beautiful stream here and this very expertly made bridge, there's this this dray box here. This box, this little paddock, is what you said. Paddock, perfect word for this, mm -hmm. of where these dray lives. And so, like, if they want, if the rebels here wanted to be really hidden. They're making it very exposed. Also, if it's windy, these trays are out there in the wind. Super sad. Tuck them away in the forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least make uh, some kind of upwind wind turbulizer. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, yeah, windbreak. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a wind turbulizer. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess the only thing I could say is this would be hidden if in every single valley around there are similar paddocks with little settlements of the locals and so they're just making a settlement of a similar type and so when the surveillance of the empire comes through all they see is a bunch of similar looking things yeah. security by I obscurity security by obscurity yeah so but instead what we get is a is a show of force 
Yeah. So if you have like a bunch of these of these Dray paddocks around in every valley, like you don't draw attention to your particular rebel station because every valley has one. Instead, if you have like this suspicious single base, then you get you get show of force. These TIE fighters like <laughs> just, just just buzzing you. Just Well, I think the behavior of the TIE fighter here is consistent with it being just another paddock, just another settlement. And the TIE fighters oh. are just going around intimidating all the locals mm. with flybys. They're not really doing surveillance. They're just like, let the locals know we're here and we're scary. Is that what's happening? Because they didn't. They... Hey, I, I see it. We're not going to shoot you. We're not, but we could. Yeah. So they're acting like this is just a local settlement that needs intimidating because if they knew that they were going to attack the local imperial they base they would shoot them that's right and the fact so i guess they see they see all the drays in the paddock and so they're like all right these farmers are staying here whatever mm -hmm. so this is consistent with what we said last episode we said the tie fighters really didn't look like they were doing surveillance it looked like they were doing power runs for intimidation and we see here, yeah. they are also, they're doing power runs. They see settlement, and they're like, I'm going to buzz the tower or buzz the paddock. I'm going to buzz the, buzz the paddock. <laughs> Let those drays know what's up. <laughs> yep. Let's play it one more time. I want to see the... So intimidating. They're, they're so fast. Like, why? That noise. But I get it. It's intimidating. <laughs> so intimidating. So intimidating. I want to be a pilot. Yeah. I want to be a pilot so I can go harass locals. That's what I want to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. My dream job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this. So we were back to the town that Cassian used to live in uh, with his mother and Bix and that whole crew. Um, so he, they sent the diversionary uh, speeder into town and blew it up. And like the next day, this local government's like, all right, get the work crews out there, clean it up, let's mm -hmm. do it. And look at all the people mm -hmm. in hard hats. Every one of them's wearing a hard hat. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're color coded probably for which job they're doing. And they're just on it. Mm -hmm. Look at these split. Let's get this cleaned Love up, it. people. Like the government. Nobody, nobody's sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. Everyone working. The yeah. government's on it. Yeah. This is a great place to live. Yeah. Amazing. So now the Imperials are going to come in and screw it up. Mm -hmm. I wonder. I wonder if they'll make it real nice real quick. The Imperials? Yeah. I mean, maybe they'll pave some roads. and But, I mean, you just get out of the way of this local government and pretty much things will be fine. Yeah, that's a good point. There's not much to do. Yeah. Maybe provide some security, which the locals may actually welcome because now they're under the umbrella of the Empire. If the Empire leaves them alone locally... The government can do its business and everything's fine. True. They just make sure no criminal stuff's going on, mm -hmm. which is good, right? Mm -hmm. But then it slowly devolved into a police state. We're not there yet. Not there yet. But we'll get there. We'll see. Nice location for them to choose. This is like, there's there right in the center there, there's that um, the, the bell tower. Mm -hmm. So this is like the city center, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is consistent. So this this uh, this tower, this building over here, this one, is the cylinder on its side building, and then here's mm -hmm. the bell tower. If you remember from mm -hmm. the previous mm -hmm. episode when we were looking at the whole town, there was the bell tower and the the circle on its side, the cylinder on its side building right here. This is the right. This is the configuration. Very consistent. Mm -hmm. And they're going to choose it for the imperial control place That's right. when they're in town. They're going to occupy it. I think the next image is uh, the same building, but from a different angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what they're choosing for the Imperial HQ. Pretty nice. I wonder why this... Each... each Go ahead. Each officer's place gets a little gets a little balcony from them. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, oh, yeah. Probably got a nice conference room in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Be well run. They're, not, they're probably it's not like kicking out the local government and city council, right? They're just... They're going to be one layer oh, above... My is that right? My understanding is that this is a hotel. Oh, I'm thinking like the city council is in a different building. 
the yeah. empire comes in, takes over this hotel as their HQ. So now the government structure is, you know, everyone, and then this, the, the city council, and then the empire's at the top. Oh, so are you saying that they're in their normal building? I'm not, I I'm thought not, they would just I, operate out of here. Yeah, I'm not talking about the physical location. I'm talking about the, uh, the authority. Oh, power diagram. structure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're not, they're not disbanding the city council and replacing it with Empire, right? They're whole. We're just going to oversight you. I think that's what they're going to do. I mean, that's actually like the minimally intrusive way to do that, mm -hmm. right? You just come into a city that's having problems. Maybe their like finances aren't in order. So you come in and observe what they do. Mm -hmm. And then you give them corrections on mm -hmm. how to keep their city in line. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah. This seems like a pretty good way to manage, actually. Yeah, yeah very interesting. I wonder why this particular planet is important. I mean, it, the galaxy is huge, right? And this, in terms of city size, is fairly small for all the possible I mean, cities in the galaxy. There's something particularly... The Empire, was leaving, the Empire was leaving them alone until people were dying. Until there were like unsolved murder cases. Maybe was it the the stolen star path unit that set off alarm bells for this city and made them come in? Was that the thing? Maybe. Hmm. They also came down on the corporate guys. That's right. Hmm. I guess we'll learn more why this is so important. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Him. Total intuitive. Yeah, we already talked about yeah. that. Wrong. <laughs> I think this may be just how they fly, just real what? low all the time. What? The clearance above this dam. <laughs> like, any misstep or a mechanical problem or pilot error, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you've just got no room for error. And the tri fighter might slam into the, the, the dam. The dam. So, I don't know. I think they just need, they need, you know, let's, let's put a 1,000 on, on foot other hand, floor on this, on flybys. What's that? On the other hand, you want your pilots to know how big their plane is. Like, like imagine parking your car, but you had to have like 30 feet around you at all times. Like you had no idea how big your car is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, then if you want to do training on making sure you know exactly what, you know, a low flight looks like, so you got plenty of mountains nearby you know, train on those mountains. So if there is a problem, nobody <laughs> dies on the dam. You don't kill all of your own people inside the dam. They, they all drown under there. <laughs> yeah, and also do it slowly. What are you doing? You don't got to do this fast. Yeah. Just this unnecessary risk, it seems like. <laughs> That's how Empire runs itself. Oh, yeah, this is the, the Imperial Security Agent. She's so competent. She's like, there's like mm -hmm. multiple rebel like operations happening in disparate locations and she's like picking the needle out of the haystack and being like those five uh, operations yeah. are coming together just for something big she puts it together amazing that that's just too random to not be random yeah. she's like that's how that's how i would do it and then her second in command this guy to the left he's like i support you he's like on her side this team amazing yeah <laughs> yeah i would work for her i would work with him absolutely absolutely yeah what a supportive, healthy work environment. That's right. Besides the fact they're doing evil stuff. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I just went right past that part. <laughs> Here's the gang. Here's the gang. Do we know their names? I see. I see Cassian. Cassian, I got it. Yes. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, we got the... Let's go through. Can we go through their names? I mean, they, they gave us our names. I just don't remember, I don't remember. them. It's so hard to keep track. They introduced them early in the episode. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't do that. And I think this guy's name right here is Skeen. This is the doctor who helped yeah. heal Cassian's arm. This yep. is the leader. I don't remember her name. This guy, I don't remember his name. And the young guy, the idealist, I don't remember his name. <laughs> so yep. here's the gang. We I don't remember their names. Here's the gang. <laughs> let's watch him go in go into the fight mm -hmm. this is a car car again yep just another same shot very cool same shot the station why is the ship on a rail again yeah why is it on a rail yeah why is it on a rail 
That means that in order to build the ship, instead of getting like a flyer or just a, a speeder or another type of car, they they're like, we're going to use this so many times we're going to build a railway toward the other station. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not worried about the, the, the takeoff. I'm more worried about the coming in, like the landing. Like you got to land it and then <laughs> mount it up on the rail. Oh, is this thing going to fly? That's what they said in the in the uh, in the planning stage. That's why they brought Cassian Interesting. In. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. This is another place where I think speeder levitation might be useful. You could do speeder levitation yeah. on all sides to confine it or or support it in the floor. A rail seems, I don't know, so 19th century. Hmm. Curious. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see how it goes down. Maybe they'll show us what's up. This was a uh, this guy. I think his name is Skeen. Immediately Skeen, recognizes yeah. this as Kyber Crystal. Is yeah. that like what if it's just? I mean, I recognized what it. If, <laughs> <laughs> what if it's just some rock? It could be like a some worthless gem of the same color and like. Yeah. Doesn't it what, take? What, a, it would have been a. Doesn't it take an, been an amazing bluff? Oh, okay. Yeah, doesn't it take an expert to know fake from from real? Or is this just common knowledge that you can just, oh, it's Kyber Crystal. It's so obvious. I don't know. I don't know. I thought, I thought that was weird. It would, it would have been an amazing bluff if, if Skeen's like, this is a Kyber Crystal. And Andor is like, he's like, no, I made that in elementary school. It came out of a $10 Play-Doh kit. Like, <laughs> and, the guy, and Skeen's like, oh, well, I'm an ass then. <laughs> like, here, take it back. Yeah, right. So he would have to know that it's Kyber. So if Andor's like, no, no, that's actually, if Cassian's like, oh, no, no that's a, that's worthless. I, I found that on yeah. the riverbank. And yeah. he would be like, absolutely not. I know this is, 100%, I know this is Kyber crystal. He could never be bluffed out of it because he knows for sure. I just, it seems, do I know gems that well? I don't know gems or like rocks or no, no way. No. No. cool ship interesting asymmetry of like the driver sits on the left but they gave him a little cockpit up front so he can see around the left and right mm -hmm. very nice very cool i was also thinking about the scale of coruscant is just unfathomable i mean this is one section tiny tiny section of the planet the whole planet is a city she's a senator you know it's just the amount of power that she has is wild. It's just wow. They nailed the scale here. It's just amazing. Hmm. And look how congested and busy the traffic is down there. This isn't even the expressway. They take the expressway shortly after this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. What a planet. Crazy. Trantor. Who's Trantor? Is Trantor the planet they're on? Trantor is, so they're on is the planet from Foundation that Coruscant uh -huh. is based on. Oh. Is this the capital planet of the Empire or of the yeah, the Galactic Empire? And it's a city planet. What is I thought Foundation was some other series. Yeah, that's some other series. It's not it, it, it's not Star Wars. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. But yeah. It's a separate independent science fiction and there, there's like cross talking okay. right. i think it's i would be i don't i guess i don't know this for a fact but i'm pretty sure george lucas took inspiration for coruscant from trantor it happens yeah, totally uh oh yeah so this is the overview of the dam the imperial dam Damn. Damn. apparently this is super important i still don't know why it's just a dam Oh, yeah. So if I remember, they said that this area is quite cavernous and so it would be good for storing things. And so they built a dam and pushed people, pushed like the locals out. Mm -hmm. So that way the empire could have access to the caverns. And they did say that this planet Aldani is somehow like close to everything, but not too close. So it's like this fantastic mm -hmm. distribution like hub. hub planet. So this is like an initial settlement slash installation and they're going to like expand it 
from here on out. Oh, that's right. Something that's like that. I said, yeah. yeah. Very cool though. Oh yeah, I was confused about this. Does this was this mean? So he was like sitting in his bed, all destroyed by his mother, uh, thinking about how he can turn his life around after the fiasco um, that he went through. So he he takes out the hologram and he looks at Cassian. Does that mean he's hating the Empire right now for screwing it, up his career, and so he's going to join him, or is he looking at Cassian thinking, "I want revenge on this guy because he's the reason everything went to crap." I think that's what he's thinking. I think that's what he's thinking. I think I think he's angry at Cassian for outsmarting him. For outsmarting him. Okay. I was I was I actually wasn't sure which one I was supposed to think. I wasn't sure either, but this is my hunch. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. This is the signal fire. So the, mm-hmm. the 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 rebel group signals the the lieutenant I think he is, who's yeah. who's running the facility with the fire. But it's like there's does the imperial the the imperial installation not have any patrols or lookouts? Yeah, it's just this guy on this hill, just like like. I mean, we're seeing it with night vision, but you can see a fire yeah. at night. Like <laughs> it's just the thing that's bright. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is visible to everyone at the base that doesn't have night vision. And is, assuming the lieutenant's not going to tell everybody on the base, like, hey, I'm colluding with the rebels. So he's the only one right. who knows on the base. So any guard out there is going to be like, uh, there was suspicious what? activity. Like, what the what the H? What suspicious activity? A, a handheld torch that was waving around in the middle of the dark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then lieutenant's like, don't worry about it. And they're like, what the? I don't know. It just don't worry about it. It seemed really... A little, little too... Non-covert is that a word? It's a little too, yeah, it, exposed. Exposed, yeah, like too easy to see. I don't know, crazy. Yeah, yeah. unless un- and then not only is it go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm I'm transitioning. I was gonna say unless there's locals who go up on hilltops and swing fire all the time. Oh, that's normal. So it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> you set your watch to it. And it's just a it's just a religious thing. Just a religious every day, thing, just yeah. every a fire at night. Yep, yeah, every day. Oh, and that's why that's why the guy waves his arm for too long because like the 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 cell the cell leader the the girl she's she's like put your hand down he like keeps waving with the watch. Okay, that should do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So so like eight seconds after she says stop, he he keeps waving. Like who is this person yeah. actually signaling? Like. As soon as my boss is like, put your hand down, I put my hand down. Yeah. I don't understand why he, he, he was like slightly disobeying her for some reason. I didn't really understand. Yeah. <laughs> the only way it made sense to me was that he has his own mission, which is to signal for some longer period of time. Mm. So he wasn't getting his message out quick. Uh, he, yeah, he needed to keep going. Which, what, what is the message that they're sending through the fire? I think it's green light, I guess. Green light. <laughs> We're like, we're ready. We're through, coming through fire. Like, yeah, yeah. We're, we're good on our end. It seems like not a lot of communication happening for a huge amount of risk. Huge risk. Huge risk. Yeah. Because like if an Imperial soldier sees that there's a light up there, they just send a TIE fighter. You're not going to outrun the TIE fighter. That's right. Or even, even just send some soldiers up there. It's going to screw up the plan so badly, you know. The plan's off. plan's off. Mm-hmm. that's it i think that was the end of the episode end of the episode so we'll see you for andor season one episode six yeah we'll see you next time we'll see what happens it's going down Let's see what goes down <laughs> let's see what's up with that damn, damn.